Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem Fatihullah Ti Ya Rasul Wa Ulul Amri Minkum And always a reminder for myself and Abdukul Ajeez wa Da'eef wa Miskeen wa Zalim wa Jahad and but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence alhamdulillah that always a reminder for myself that the When they describe that Allah describing for guidance whom are guided are truly guided and the understanding of spiritual guidance and its immense reality that whatever course they have us on is a curriculum and this curriculum has nothing in it that is wasteful, unnecessary nor anything random. Everything is a precise medicine. Imagine going to a doctor and the doctor has no idea how to practice medicine and every time he gives you the wrong pills. And in medicine if you give the wrong pill they get sick, they have allergenic reaction or they don't get the remedy that was necessary for the sickness that was diagnosed. So imagine then spiritual medicine and spiritual doctors. If it was something random then the, nothing would be happening with the students who are the patients and the talks would be from left to right, right to left, up uh, north and south and north and west and all over the place. What's trying to be stressed here is we've had comments before that why are you guys sort of building fear in people because a tremendous amount of videos are coming out with very scary titles, very scary intros and then the rest of the titles are all about character and character building. To them it appears random. But to the guides and the big guides above that are inspiring the course because they see the whole horizon and the student and not even the one who's a student just the bystander who's emailing and sending in an email is he sees only the trunk of a tree. He doesn't see the horizon, doesn't see the forest, doesn't see anything but just a series of trunks of trees. It requires the ascension when the student is ascending above the horizon of the trees because in a forest really all you see are the, are the tree uh, stumps. It's the elevation when the student is elevating and begins to see above the horizon of the trees that, oh my goodness I see this plateau, I see this vision, I see this view. And on the horizon of that view they see an immense storm and difficulty coming and behind they see whatever Allah wants them to see means the horizon of one whom has ascended and taken now a path of ascension and rising is completely different than the one whom is on the ground just looking at all the trees and say, why you guys talk like this, why it's like that? So for us to understand there are two sicknesses that stop the student from reaching the reality that's being taught here. And this reality is to connect your heart, to make your tafakkur, to make your connection, to lose the importance of your physical power, your physical ability and your unique identity to destroy all of that so that to return back to the ocean of power. So then the most dangerous rope that now is facing people is the anxiety of the future. So they're thinking that what's happening to their future? What's happening to their plans? What's happening? So the title of this discussion is the shaykhs are on a course and a curriculum. It's nothing of it is random 
and everything is precise from Atiullah, Atiya Rasul wa ulul amri minkum whom each one their horizon much higher in the immensity of that reality and they see that the rope that is most difficult for the student now is the understanding of the future. Their plans, their aspirations, their hopes, what they thought for the future, what the future was going to bring for them, how they're going to plan all their, their future, how they're going to plan their life insurance, how they're going to plan what schools the kids go to, how they're going to plan to buy this, to buy that, to buy everything. Those plans are a big rope and that rope that shaitan has latched onto your neck and by means of that rope is holding the servant down. So that rope that is in the front of the future and all the plans and aspirations that shaitan is pumping into your heart, into our minds, into our being, what, what, what if and what and how and how are we going to do all these things. And that by means of that fear and anxiety he's able to hold the servant. Because their whole focus is now the future. So then you see how the shaykhs come with the exact medicine to begin to… they're cutting that rope. Whether you know it, you don't know it, you're consciously aware of it or you're unconsciously aware of it, doesn't matter. Because the guidance when Allah says, whom is guided is truly guided and if not guided there is no guidance from uh, except through Allah so Allah knows that begin to release the teachings of the future and, and what to expect from this future. So then they start to release these videos, do you see this destruction, do you see this violence, do you see this craziness? They're poisoning your plate, they're putting a, 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 a poison to make the taste of that plate, that desire to perish. So it's very, it's very specific medicine that whatever you're planning and what you thought you're going to buy and the life insurance you're going to get and what kind of schools all your kids are going to go to. Well ask somebody who just came from Damascus five years ago, they had plans too. And then look in, in Burma and they had plans too and all over the world they've been hit and hit and hit. So it's the responsibility of the shaykhs to show you Qiyamah right in front of your eyes. Are you not seeing it? Are you not seeing the violence in front of you? It's a matter of time before you grab your blanket and have to run. But you're not going to be somebody who wants to run with nothing and that you were taken by surprise because Allah wants to give a gift for the one whom believes. That we said many times, why you need to wait for the entire apocalypse to occur to say that I want to be with Sayyidina Mahdi I want to be with all these holy souls. If you just understand the teachings that are coming in the future, what these teachings are that describe future events, the condition of the world, the condition of violence, the condition of, of all the, the crazinesses in front of us. That's an immense cutting of the rope of, of anxiety, the, why are you anxious about? What are you thinking about all of these things and all your aspirations? Do you see how Allah is collapsing the dunya and the natural reality of your soul is begin to just look at it and say, Yatif, it is collapsing and I should be spending more time making my connection. I should be spending more time just sitting and making my salawat. And that's what Allah want is this, cut their rope, cut the rope of their understanding of the future. How shaitan made some people not even a rope but like a chain, You no matter how much you cut it they're like, no don't tell me about the future, I, uh, the future going to be fantastic, everything is great. It's This is not about even the actual future. This is about your level of samina wa atan. If they tell you the world is collapsing, you reach a state in which I see the teachings, I agree and 
I agree. So mena wa ta'ala and this was the way that Sayyidina Muhammad taught the companions. When Prophet taught the holy companions about Dajjal, their level of yaqeen and belief was so powerful they could see the Dajjal behind the tree and they, they knew with all their heart that moment is right there because for them space and time is of no relevance, they're in the presence of the master of all realities. So it's not a matter of you, you take what we teach and put it in your brain and say, no Shaykh it looks like it's going to be very far off. So no, no this is not about you trying to understand with your head, shut your head off. We described in other talks, leave your head somewhere else. This is about hearing these talks, watching these videos, understanding the miraculous nature in which how these videos are being brought to you, how the graphics are being compiled and we're not all sitting together doing that. We're giving a talk at different times, they're randomly choosing different videos, they're putting together all of the different images and everything and they put it together like an orchestra and a package comes out with a beautiful warning and a, and a beautiful reality. And the purpose of that is to cut that rope in the front so that don't think about the future, don't make plans in your heart about the future. Think on a daily basis, Ya Rabbi I don't know what the future brings and it's not in my hands but my love for you, my love for Sayyidina Muhammad and when I describe and I talk a certain way that I'm ready to go at night, I don't harm myself and wish to harm myself to go back to Allah That's a ridiculous crazy thought. When we talk like this that we're ready means that we feel a contentment in our heart. We did our best during the day and Ya Rabbi uh, as I lay my soul to sleep and if you take me before I wake I pray for you my soul to take. Means if I'm going to lay myself to sleep, I'm ready Ya Rabbi, you take me and you are taking my soul at every moment and if you don't want to bring it back, I'm content with that. And the importance of cutting the rope in the future, cutting the rope that's around your neck that's going forward and shaitan holds that rope and keeps tugging on it, keep tugging on it. You're not going to get to that, you're not going to have this, you're not going to have enough money for that, you're not going to do this, you're not going to do that and how are you going to raise your kids, how are you going to take them to college, how are you going to pay for this, how are you going to pay for that, how are you going to do all these things and people are having anxiety and they have to go get anxiety medicine. So this teaching is teaching us what to be anxious about, this dunya is all collapsing. The one who fed you today, inshaAllah do your zikr, he'll feed you tomorrow. Alhamdulillah. If he doesn't feed you tomorrow, um, I don't know what you did <laughs> but alhamdulillah Allah's, Allah's gracious, Allah's merciful, Allah's amazing that if you show just a bit of love and a love towards Sayyidina Muhammad why not Allah just send immense blessings. I fed you today, I fed you 30 years ago when you didn't know about me and I'll feed you all the way into the grave. What are you to worry about? Just have good character and good actions and before you know it these shaykhs have cut that rope in the front. And when the servant feels that rope is cut means that they actually feel that they're in taslim, this is called taslim, they're submitting, Ya Rabbi I'm doing the best I can, I'm listening to their advice, I do my awrads, I do my zikrs, I do my prayers and you hold my future in your hand. And I'm believing these qiyamahs coming, these difficulties are coming, immediately that event horizon is now appearing within the servant. The shaykh is able with these teachings and you believing Allah begin to make the event horizon for that servant to begin to appear. Their mouth, their death is now moving in, the reality of their soul is getting stronger because this is the soul's world. When you start to believe these difficulties are coming, Armageddon is coming, Sayyidina Mahdi is coming, that's the life of the soul. It's becoming powerful, it's, its belief is being given to it, it begins to push the body, get down, this is not anymore your world. This is our world, the world of Malakut. At that time that, that desire and that flavour is going. Then at the same time they're teaching the other rope. 
the past. They're teaching you have good character. All the teachings of good character is that cut the rope of the past. Why do people keep thinking about the past? Because shaitan has that rope on in the back of them. Some again rope, most of them chains. Remember what they said, remember what they did, was like this, it was like that. As a result of the past everybody has depression. What the father did to them, mother did to them, brother did to them, cousin did to them, a stranger did to them, whatever the past of their life was, whatever this one was like this, this one threw a shoe at me, this one did like this at me, someone said something to me but nobody threw a shoe at me, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> we threw that in because a lot of the, the Southeast culture their, they, their mothers throw shoes and things. <laughs> but whatever happened, happened. Whatever Allah wrote for the servant was written for the servant. That's why then all of their sh the shaykh's teachings are coming to teach good manners. If you have good manners then you don't think about these things. It's a taslim and submit to Allah submit, make your character and your, your, your approach to the love of Allah and love of Sayyidina Muhammad to be so important that the goodness of your character you begin to forgive. You forgive, you forgive. Everything that happened in the past, yeah, I'm trying my best and it's not something easy because to forgive something is you make a tawbah, I forgive them, I, f I forgive my own things asking for forgiveness from you Ya Rabbi and I forgive things that have been done to me. But most of all Ya Rabbi is a, is a sense of forgetfulness, let me to forget what was done. And unfortunately for awliyaullah they forget nothing, they're aware of everything but they live in a state in which to continuously make their istighfar continuously make their istighfar so that to not have this dunya influence of depression. So anxiety and depression are the two ropes that shaitan is tied around insan. One rope going to the front of their future and the other rope is in their past and everything that was done to them for them to be depressed about and they have to take medicine and think about. And every type of difficulty shaitan is ruling the servant. So of course none of these teachings are random. Every teaching that coming out is a dose of medicine, dose of medicine. That if you're clever you're picking up the understanding that if I have good character of course you don't go back and have to fight everyone. That it was what Allah wanted and I'm trying my best to taslim. And I don't need to be depressed about the past, Allah whatever Allah wrote, Allah wrote it. And if it was a difficulty Allah wrote it and raised your rank by means of that difficulty. You're not sitting there because you had an easy life, it's everything that you went through of difficulty that you're now viewing this on your channel, on your TV and then an opportunity has opened within your heart for a Muhammadan haqqai. So then you think, how we got there? It was the school of difficulty that Allah had enrolled us in. So everything that happened to us in the past Allah was raising and raising and raising the servant, now sit, sit at the table of the Muhammadan haqqaiq and begin to indulge in its understanding and its realities and the immensity of its reality. So then what happens if, if your understanding of the future is coming and that don't worry about the past and have good manners? They teach you then your muraqabah, live right now. The only thing that matters for you is this moment right now that you have. Do you feel this moment? Are you living in this moment? And if you can reach a state of cutting these two ropes, we described before, you're a servant that can fly. And then somebody said, oh look they, they're talking about flying. No, not flying with the wings and you're going away. But flying in which your heart is open and your soul is free and that's the whole purpose of religion to worship Allah as if you see Allah that was Maqam al-Ihsan. Allah want to open Maqam al-Ihsan for servants that when they worship they see the Divinely Presence. How can they see the Divinely Presence? Because their soul is like a bird. 
the rope in the front was cut, the rope in the back was cut and they live in the moment. And as a result their soul goes to experience every reality that Allah wants to dress upon it. And they be blessed by it, dressed by that moment's tajalli, that moment's realities and all of its haqqaiqs. Mm. And then again before they sleep they pray for Allah that we're sleeping and if you take me before I wake I pray for you my soul to take. That Allah to be content with our Lord and content with the immensity of that day. We pray that Allah give us more and more understanding that Ameen. these teachings and this way none of it is random. Everything is on a curriculum, every medicine and dose that coming out absorb it, understand it, believe it. Don't look to it and say, kind of looks like you guys may be a little bit right shaped but means now that knowledge went to your head. And with your head you're going to now try to debate me whether, oh it's really coming or the technology really going to collapse or 5G going to be like this or 4G going to be like that. You lost the point. This wasn't about your head debating with my head. This was about your heart accepting what this isharats and teachings are coming. Do you believe this world is perishing? Well this, yeah, everyone has to believe it's qiyamah, it's called qiyamah. So before you can see qiyamah Prophet gave us the understanding of Imam Mahdi and Armageddon and the big battles and big destructions. So it's just a matter of the shaykh building your belief. You watch it, you believe it. That's what we talked last night, Samina wa Atana, that these people, they're the people when Allah described that I'm going to take them from Masjid al-Haram to Masjid al-Aqsa but Sami al-Basir, did you reach the level of what the shaykh is teaching you from Sami that you hear and you believe, you hear and you believe. When you reach the state of hearing and believing Allah opens basir, opens your spiritual vision. Why? Because that was the whole talk so that you can see. You begin to see Sayyidina Mahdi Salam. you don't need Armageddon everybody to be, to be crushed on the floor. You'll see the qiyamah, you'll see the destruction that coming. The shaykhs have a vision in which they can look and they can see every building that will be on fire during those difficulties. Allah show everything into the heart of the servant because they were the servants who they heard, they believed and as a result Allah opened and they became Ahl al-Basira. We pray that Allah give us an understanding of how the shaykhs teach and that's why it's not, it's not easy to accompany them. It's not easy to accompany that reality and they patiently keep going, keep going yeah, because this is the way of Sayyidina Khidr when Allah when we talk about the greatness of Naqshbandiyatul Aliyah that He's in the Naqshbandi chain Sayyidina Khidr So what reality is that that the Allah is describing a Prophet of Allah as a shaykh of the Naqshbandi tariqah? That Allah is describing in Surat Al Kahf a Naqshbandi shaykh and that his secret, his reality, his teachings is in your shajara, is in your chain. So it means that whatever he got from Allah he has dressed the next shaykh, the next shaykh, the next shaykh until the living shaykhs of today are inheriting all the inheritance of the chain from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad to the heart of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq all the way down to Shaykh Abdul Faiz al Dagestani, Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani, Imam Shaykh Muhammad Adil and the beloved servants of Allah Mawlana Shaykh Isham Kabani, Shaykh Adnan Kabani. Means this reality and this dress is flowing in that reality. We pray that Allah dress us, bless us. Amen and to understand the importance of the tariqah, its knowledges and its way to reach to the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad For hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.